With the untimely passing of Grand Chief Joseph Toquirda Norton on August 14th, the Council of Chiefs had a decision to make. What action would they take in terms of dealing with the vacancy in the highest elected office in the community? To present the decision, the Council of Chiefs agreed to have the Gunzi Dahayas, the female chiefs, explain the decision and some of the actions that will be implemented during this very challenging time. Here today to explain uh, our uh, press release that went out to the community, uh, explaining more in detail of the fact that uh, no interim Grand Chief will be appointed for the remainder of this 2018 to 2021 term of office. Um, at Monday's duly convened council meeting, um, the council dis deliberated extensively about uh, what we were going to do in the absence of uh, Grand Chief uh, Joseph Deguiro Norton. And um, I have to say there was uh, some, some very good dialogue. And in the end, what the council came to consensus, full consensus on is the fact that uh, we didn't think it would be appropriate at this time to name anybody to fulfill that role that um, out of respect for uh, the Guido and the fact that this was his, his mandate and his term of office that we feel as a council we could function in a way that is uh, collaborative in nature and that we could fulfill all of the roles and responsibilities that um, you know, would have been uh, fulfilled by him if he was able to continue in that role. It's really important, I think, for the community to understand how the Council of Chiefs arrived at the decision um, after some lengthy deliberations. So during the discussions, uh, the Council of Chiefs decided to look at the newly uh, formatted portfolio structures um, that were created actually at the beginning of this term. Those new portfolio structures actually allow this table to continue in a, a very efficient manner, even in the absence of the Grand Chief, just by the very nature of um, the authority that's delegated to the portfolio teams. Those portfolio teams were also meant to ensure that not everything had to go to the table, uh, to the council table at large, but that the authority to make certain decisions would remain with the portfolio teams. So essentially, uh, each lead portfolio chief uh, will be uh, continue to be responsible for the portfolio, but is assisted by additional chiefs within uh, that portfolio, and as well uh, some additional players such as the um, technicians and members, other members from OCC or the uh, executive director's office, depending on the subject matter. Well, we're certainly in a time of transition with Joe's passing. There's a lot of things that uh, need to be attended to, and we do want to assure our, our staff as well as the community, that we are taking things uh, very seriously. We're going to be working very uh, closely in the next several months to ensure that the organization continues to function. As for the uh, chairperson, uh, I have been chairing the meetings, the Monday meetings, uh, and some of the strategics on Tuesday since COVID started. Uh, so the decision of the table by consensus again uh, was to continue uh, operating in that in that fashion um, and I did have the blessing of the Grand Chief at the time when uh, when I had started uh, uh, chairing so uh, I'm, I'm more than uh, honored uh, to carry on uh, with that chairing responsibility. The political evolution in Gahnawage is now that the community selects uh, the Grand Chief in a formal election so therefore, with that spirit in mind, uh, we didn't think it was uh, appropriate at this time for us as the council to, to proceed in that manner and for us to appoint one of uh, the 11 remaining chiefs to fulfill that role. The basis for that decision uh, was due partially to the fact that the election law is uh, silent as to what you do uh, in a situation uh, such as that that we're facing now. Uh, as well as the uh, governance documents uh, were also silent on that matter. So we will make amendments uh, to the election law, I guess, in the next term, as well our governance manual. If in the future the Grand Chief takes vacation or you know has to take a leave of absence or become sick, how do we fulfill um, the position? Is it a, an appointment by the table? Um, do we maybe look at the potential of in the future having an assistant Grand Chief and uh, hopefully, you know, by the next term, 2021, 
um, this whole governance framework and document that will govern um, the way the Council of Chiefs operates uh, will be finalized and that this will be a component of that. So one of the things that we've talked about in the last couple of days too is the ability to be able to report back to the community more consistently. As you know, our office has been closed for quite some time and we're looking at the progress and how to reintegrate some of our staff. We have had uh, essential staff working in most of our units for the past several months and we are looking at returning back to our offices uh, in a timely manner. So for reporting purposes, we are going to be looking at different ways on how to reach you and to let you know of uh, what is going on within the organization and the progress that we've made. From a cultural standpoint and roles and responsibilities, uh, I had proposed the idea that the Asa Gudizahayas that you see here today, uh, well actually I had proposed that the four of us, uh, including Yedzahayas, Gina Deer, would address the community uh, to explain uh, the decision that was made by the council on Monday. And uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, uh, Gina couldn't uh, be available today, but uh, we're hopeful that she will also uh, address the community in the near future. I guess from a, a nurturing kind of standpoint as well, that we wanted to assure everybody that, you know, as, as the women leaders that have been put into this position uh, by the community, that, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at all aspects of, of what we need to do in the next 10 months. I think if we could find that spirit of collaboration and cooperation as leaders and show that uh, to the community that, you know, it just sets a good example of the work that we can do in the future moving forward. So that was why we decided to, to address the community today as the Asa Gudit of the Moha Council of Ganawake.